Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to an AOC Pro Cup presentation of Everlast Game Filling vs. Arrow Gaming. Game 2 in this best of 3 between these two teams in the upper bracket of the AOC Pro Cup. So this is round 2, day 3, and we are looking into some interesting games. Last one didn't turn out so well for Everlast. They got pinned down pretty hard by Lance's pickup of the Storm Spirit and uh, just great movement as a four-man Dota squad. They really just took every fight they uh, looked to and the amazing build-up and farm on DDZ's Dragonite was also something to behold. So a lot of factors contributing to their success, but now Everlast try to take it back and we'll see how the, tie, the team from the Thai Qualifiers uh, does accomplish this, if they're going to be able to bounce back and it, it just keep with what they know and try to make their strategies uh, as effective as possible. We'll see. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We did have a small hiccup where Congo is not technically in game until we go for the remake, but yeah. He, bad. I'll, I'll just, uh, you'll just have to remember every single hero I call out for the bands and picks and cast uh, retroactively through that, I suppose. But yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Ten seconds. I must recommend the the, the, yeah. the, um, the players on their on their punctuality. I mean, usually it takes a while, so I literally all tap for a second and missed the game. But anyway, I apologize. Yeah, no, I mean it's no problem. It was really really quick turnover, so no big deal. Anyways, what we're looking at here is a initial ban of Invoker and Enchantress from Everlast. They picked up the Doom and the Sand King for their first two. Uh, looks like Nyx, Assassin, and Visage were the ones taken off the board for Arrow, and they instead went for an Alchemist and then later on a Slurk. So first pick Alk. For, uh, their second pick was the Slark, and that's definitely going to be BSG on the off lane there. Now, Everlast in turn, they're banning out the Lone Druid and the Naga Siren. They're worried about that split push, maybe that Radiance pickup, and uh, just something that they Ten don't need to cover all their bases. Remaining. They like to the fight, they don't like the Rat, so they're going to try to squish that as Five early as possible. Though technically, remaining. Nature's Prophet is still on the board. Um, anyways, the final two bans Reserve for time. Arrow Gaming were Puck and Bristleback. Not going to enable those to be options for Everlast as they have first pick in round two. So, Slark and Alchemist pick up for Arrow. Mm -hmm. Correct? Radiant yeah, team well. Pick. The, I mean, we have, we have seen the BSG Slark a few times in our offlane and he plays it, you know, very, very competently. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them do it again. Although, Slark in the safe lane does have a bit of a better snowball effect and. Uh, I think we have seen Lance play it as well before. Um, we have seen playing the Slark as well. And it, as once again, it's a very, very impact hero, very, very active as well. So it could mean, you know, it could mean that we go on him and he will just wreck through Ten everything uh, once again. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's going to be... Uh, this Five is a game I think that, that Arrow wants to secure uh, pretty early on. I mean, having a game in hand, you do have that um, you do have that momentum from the first game. Time. And uh, yeah. we have seen Everlast go against it before, up against Zephyr. So I'm hoping to see that they can maybe pull things together and uh, go for that big big team fight that i think they had yeah the team fight in the that they had against uh, zephyr on the weekend yeah definitely um i also really like the doom pickup for everlast it makes it so they don't even have to like ban out a storm or something crazy like that they just say hey if you pick the storm you're gonna get doomed but even so arrow they are willing to pick up a slark into a doom which is a little bit unorthodox is now they're running a hell of a lot of silences arrow gaming mm. picks up the wind ranger in response to everlast's elder titan selection and elder titan close out phase two with a skywrath mage pick so we're not just oh, looking wow. at doom we're looking at ancient seal and we're going to see yep. alchemist stunning himself multiple times over slark failing to get his ultimate off maybe wind ranger unable to wind run or shackle away it's just going to get ugly. If Everlast are really on point with their silences, every single hero Arrow has picked up to this point uh, is very vulnerable to that. Now, their final selection Ten of seconds. Chen for Mozen, Arrow is going to be able to maneuver with that okay. I mean, Five if you do him a Chen, it's like, oh no, I don't have a hand of God. Maybe not a mechanism if he's the one to pick it up. But he's mm -hmm. still going to be able to do a lot of work with his creeps and still going to be able to accomplish a lot in that regard. Yeah. So they I, I, should be able to gank early and actively, but we'll have to see how it plays out. Going for going for the chin is also it's I mean it's it always comes with the with the slark when you have got a doom on the team like we spoke about yesterday about sort of doom's priorities in team fights and with um, depending on who plays it be BSG or, uh, or or Lance depending on that so his doom priority becomes a bit mixed up if he is going to rather go for the alchemist go for the for the chin right at the back or try to pick up the slark and the send back heal mech everything is what really really helps especially against the doom and we saw it yesterday as well and a couple of games have actually cast up where doom has sort of been a counter and them not banning out the chin banning out the chin where it almost follows immediately when that doom does come up especially against the slark so yeah that's going to be um that's going to be quite interesting to see the big plays, the big sendbacks coming out from uh, from Mozart on his chin. 
Yeah, so we'll see how well effectively you can get it done, or if even if they even have time to do that. Because the last time we saw these three heroes come together from Everlast, Doom, Sand King, and Elder Titan, they were a wrecking crew. There was actually one point that's still burned into my memory and probably will be for years to come. Uh, initiated with a, uh, it was a smoke clash versus a smoke clash. Uh, Everlast mm. versus Zephyr. Sand King starts off with a two-man burrow strike, allowing Doom to blink in for a four-man oh, centaur yeah. war stomp, and then they just fall with the Elder Titan, dropping the ulti, dropping the uh, stomp on top of that. They didn't even need the epicenter damage, but of course that would be also amplified by the natural order. So that kind of initiation, if Arrow Gaming clusters up even remotely, it's going to get very scary very quickly. On top of that, um, they aren't going to be picking up BKBs that quickly. Usually Slark picks up one item before the BKB, and Five Alchemist usually, remaining. if he picks one up at all, waits a long time to pick one up as well. And that's going to get scary when you talk about, as I mentioned, Natural Order's Magical time. Damage Amplification with Ancient yeah. Seal's Magical Damage Amplification Dieting. with Head Skywrath ulti or a Sand King ulti. It's just a hell of a lot of magic damage that's very difficult to deal with, and it makes it for that Everlast, if they start a fight the right way, Oh my gosh, are they going to finish it? They just have all the resources and all the damage to really just send it home. Um, and yeah, Arrow it, have to answer. It, it also makes it really difficult fighting into a, fighting into an ancient, uh, sorry fighting into the Elder Titan as well with that big Ospin ulti. Um, you know, if, if they are going to be rotating, like we saw you speak about that big battle that happened with the Five Impaled and Four Man Stomp. Those sort of things. I mean, if you catch out in the jungle and. Uh, the thing about Arrow is they're an extremely active team. They they look to make things happen throughout the map, and uh, you know, getting caught out by something like that, especially with the Elder Titan on the team, people are going to get hurt very very quickly. And uh, and as you mentioned, with the, all the magic damage that they do have, it's going to be yeah. If they manage to pull it off like they did up against Zephyr, I think this is going to be a great, great, great game for Everlast. And on top of that, they just added the the one carry that can deliver the most magic damage possible. On top of that, they added in the Morphling. Oh, so oh, yeah. they are going ham on this one. I mean, you can waveform out of the pounce from Slark. Um, the only thing you really have to worry about is the shackle shot, which you can still strength morph out of. Uh, you can even dodge the unstable concoction, as far as I understand. So, remaining. yeah, this is really looking really good for our Morphling game in general, as Five long as he gets good support. Remaining. If he's kind of left high and dry, he's screwed. But with the movement we've seen from the Sand King for, on Naki in the past, time. the movement from the Doom, if he gets a good Centaur Blink, uh, yeah, I think Morphling's going to be able to do a lot of work here and move in towards Shotgun to the point that a, a squishy hero like Wind Ranger doesn't stand a chance. It's not the auto attacks mm -hmm. you got to be afraid of. It's the hundreds and hundreds of damage of Magical Nuke flying out. And when you got Skywrath Mage or ET on top of that, oh my goodness, is it getting scary. So it obviously all depends on how well the laning phase goes for Everlast. Morphling really needs some farm to get going. Um, it can very, do very little other than waveform and just strength morph while running for his life if he yeah. doesn't have a couple of good items at his back. But in this position, Arrow Gaming is down to 30 seconds for their last pick. Uh, up against the Morphling, I'm, what do you think they can go? Oh, Morphling, I think about Morphling is they have got the Doom. Oh, sorry, Doom's on their team. Uh, the Morphling, what can Arrow Gaming go to deal with the Morphling? I would say, you know, Force the morphling into situation, Ten into sort of an aggressive trial lane situation. Try and uh, try and shut him down because he doesn't have mac, he doesn't have good range. Uh, he's oh. relatively weak. What do they go for? They went for an anti carry, faceless void. This is oh, a man. very would... old meta coming back anew, and I can't wait to see it. Faceless void <laughs> versus morphling, carry versus lance versus bunk cell roti. This is gonna be a real farm fest. This is crazy. Yeah. I was that was that was gonna be my next guess. I was gonna say the anti-mage, but like I said, I started speaking about aggressive trial lane, then I realized anti-mage does not work in aggressive trial lane. So, yeah, uh, morphling versus anti-mage. Hopefully, they both get incredibly farmed, and uh, eventually we see a massive slugfest ensuing in the mm -hmm. late game. Indeed, indeed. So we're gonna go over to a quick all pick remake and uh, get Congo Kyle in the game. And then we will get rock and rolling <laughs> with this awesome feel, draft. I feel so important. Okay, I'm coming <laughs> back. Sorry, friends. But yeah, that this is gonna be fun. I mean, I was just trying to make sure. Uh, I was. I always forget when I try to remember ten heroes. I always forget one or two of them. I look stupid when I'm trying to analyze until we get into the game itself. But let me try. Faceless Void, Alchemist, Wind Ranger, Chen, and Slark on the side of Arrow Gaming. Looking pretty solid there if they can get their farm and get their early lane dominance. But on the other side, you got Doom, Morphling, Sand King, Elder Titan, Skywrath Mage. Yeah. 
it's just it's it's looking very powerful if they can get some good combinations off if they can get things together but as far as lanes go um the for early stage you're going to be looking at sand king kind of roaming in t between the safe lane and the jungle trying to get some farm yeah. with the stacks morphling will be farming on the lane i'm guessing against a bsg slark and then um who was the other support for them Skywrath. Skywrath support Skywrath, mage yeah. alongside Morphling. They don't really have lockdown, so they're just going to have to use nukes to zone, essentially. Uh, I'll be back one second. No problem. Okay, so... Yeah, in, in this position, it's really interesting because the Faceless Void late game and the Morphling late game, it's really hard to just... You can't say cut and dry who wins that. It comes down to initiation, it comes down to who gets caught in the Chronosphere, uh... How fed, how quickly the Morphling gets fed. Because if he gets like an early Ethereal Blade following maybe a Lincoln Sphere or something like that, then suddenly, um, just looking really good. I mean, you can, like I said, go up to the Wind Ranger, go up to the Chen, and while in an invulnerable state in the middle of your waveform, pop your Ethereal Blade, pop your Adaptive Strike, and then replicate back to safety. In that, like, two-second frame, you bring an enemy support, Chen or Wind Ranger, from 100% to 0 HP, and you're not even... Po it's not even possible to counteract it in that time frame. Like, obviously, you can he uh, use a mech, you can use a Hand of God if you're not stunned, and you can use a BKB if you're a core, but all in all... The, the carries aren't going to have BKBs for a long time, and that damage is going to come out fast and furious. So it's going to be on Faceless Void to land some um, impeccable Chronosphere, but we know Lance, he's a very active uh, carry player, and he certainly is used to making those plays happen. So uh, I do believe in Lance's Faceless Void, but I love to see some Morphling. So we'll see who wins this farm fest and who can bring it into a mid game dominance. It's going to be pretty interesting. And I'm back. Sorry, I we actually don't get a lot of. Well, we usually get a little bit of a break between games, but except for the last case. But yeah, um, the morphling. As you, I heard you mentioning the morphling versus AM, and as I mentioned, yeah, slugfest late game. That's exactly what I'm looking forward to. Uh, as you mentioned, it's very old school. Uh, we're looking back at the TI, TI one, TI two days of the morphling. Probably been one of the most banned heroes and anti mage as well. I really miss. Oh, faces void actually, being... but yeah. Oh, it was faces faces void? Was that the last pick? Yep. Why did, I, why did I hear anti-mage? I, I think I said anti-carry, and you took it away with that. Err, I'm sorry, once again. My bad, I wasn't in the game. But the, the faceless void, uh, that's a bit... Mm, that's a bit nicer, I guess, for the uh, for the, for the Morphling. Uh, you know, be able to lock him into the Chronosphere, and also the change to the Chronosphere, the max movement speed, allows you to be... Actually, you know, it's it's the fa I, I guess the best part of that is the phase. I mean, the the max movement speed is a little bit of a yeah, whatever for max movement speed. But the phase, I think, is the best part. I mean, getting stuck in the chronosphere, especially if you have a nature's prophet who tree who tree entered in the middle of your right before your chronosphere, then you're stuck there. You just kind of like, oh crap. But uh, yeah, that's fantastic, and they will see them knocking down pretty hard. And faces void. I don't know. It's it's so hard to tell. I mean, if Everlast play like they played on Saturday with their big team fight potential, I think they're going to have an okay time here. Uh, the biggest problem, I think, obviously, is that Slark just getting out of control and picking up the supports. Yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting, though. One thing is that uh, I believe that Everlast game filling have a lot of ways to deal with the Faceless Void and try to prevent him from initiating their silences. Obviously, I talked about them for Alchemist, for uh, using them against Slark and so on and so forth, but it, you pop an Ancient Seal or a Doom on Faceless Void, and he's going to have a hard time himself. Uh, just very, yeah. very Prepare limited by the fact that he can't Time Walk or Chrono. It's, it means that he's going to be pretty easy pickings if they can pin him down, but... That being said, what do they have to pin him down? They have the Concussive Shot slow, they have the Sanking Stun, and maybe they can pick up a Neutral Creep that will allow uh, my pro, aka <laughs> changing his name back over to Superfly, um, to try to get some of those big, big lockdowns, because they do need stuns to follow through on top of the Silence, otherwise he probably will just be able to walk on out of there. Yeah. And, uh, well, we should probably go over the of the rust is quick, quick for, unless you've done that already have you nope. done that starting things oh. off looking over at the side of the radiant here in the AFC pro cup uh, round two day three upper bracket here you're gonna be looking at arrow gaming versus everlast uh, from malaysia uh, formerly known as loya.net we've got arrow uh, starting off with a bad slow game aka hawaii running on the offlane slark plenty of regen at his disposal we're gonna be looking at faceless void down bottom he's gonna be carrying it up uh, a la lance 
Piloting the up the begins. support alchemist is Xiang Zai. Already picking up plenty of consumables. It's going to be Mozen running and on the ability. Chen. Currently just scouting out the top rune, but he is going to be making his way to his jungle in due time. Only having to worry about a ward on the central camp and uh, just a scouting ward in the southeastern corner of the jungle. Uh, finally, it is going to be DDZ on the mid lane Wind Ranger, which is uh, quite surprising, but nevertheless effective. Actually, he's yep. going to go to going to go toe to toe with Naki on the Sand King, so <laughs> this will be quite interesting indeed. That's interesting. And uh, yeah, Mozen Navi fanboy confirmed with his full Navi Chen set. But on the other side of Everlast, we have got the Sand King, as you mentioned, playing by Naki in the solo mid. Doom being handled by Superfly. Getting a little bit of harassment here from Mozen in the jungle. Morphling being handled by BSR or Bungsol Roti, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, in the off lane, we've got the Elder Titan being played by Superfly. And then finally, we have TNT on the support Skyrath Mage. And this is pretty, this is an okay lane, I think, for for BSG here. A lot of consumer. Once again, we always seem picking up a lot of consumables. And he does have Mosin here in the in the aggressive jungle, just sort of helping him out. Okay. Um, I've actually seen this once before. Um, Everlast actually aren't going to commit Naki to the mid lane here. What they're what we're actually doing there. Uh, assuming no action really breaks out and no Mosin's nearby with this Hellbear, so there's always a possibility uh, yeah. following that pounce. But uh, assuming no action breaks out, the big thing here is that Sanking was able to pick up his level 2 in the mid lane, and that's really, really big, because he has Burrow Strike to be effective in the early skirmishes, but most importantly, that Sandstorm to farm up the jungle. But once he gets to level 3, that Sandstorm will be self-sustainable, he can keep it up on unlimited amount of time, and yeah. um, also be able to do more damage per second with it. So essentially, Doom gets his time in the jungle to get his uh, Devour off to get a good neutral creep for the laning phase, and Sand King gets a little bit of time in the sun where he can get some uh, double experience and pick up that early level two, moving towards level three with these pulls. And I've seen it a couple times before, but I, I love the, the strategy in general because it just yeah. it shows a very good understanding of what these heroes are capable of and when. I'm a bit, I'm a bit concerned that they didn't pick up the Wild Wing Ripper as level one because he has really low base armor, zero base armor in the solo mid one now with his level three. But uh, up against the, um, up against the, uh, the Wind Ranger, he's taking a lot of harass, especially in terms of our power shot collecting on the creeps. Him being a melee hero as well, he's susceptible to quite a bit of damage. So it's a bit strange that he'd go for the double for the damage creep and not the, uh, the armor creep first off. I think it's a lot stronger as well as stacking up the jungle and then obviously using it to farm, using the tornado to farm out the creeps. So. Yeah, it's not, it's not the end of the world, I guess, but uh, I mean, it would have helped him a little bit more to stay in this lane and not burn through his regen this quick. And uh, he's sitting over his bottle now, so but immediately you see, look at that, DDZ just trading hits and putting him down to less than half HP. Yep, but fortunately for him, the Scorched Earth does provide quite a bit of HP sustainability. In conjunction with the bottle, he's still going to be able to sit very high HP and actually just take two sips before sending it back home on the Courier. That'll be upgrading in a few seconds, and he'll be looking pretty good for himself. Uh, in general, uh, I definitely agree with you that the armor gives him a lot more potential to trade evenly, but if he's doing what he's doing with the Scorched and Bottle and not too worried about his tank ability, he can definitely get more potential CS through that aura, as well as uh, he did actually get a crit once or twice on the Wind Ranger directly, so uh, it does give him a little bit more control in that regard for the lane. Yeah. Nice ward as well here by... Um by Superfly on the bottom lane, spotting out the jungle, spotting out the chin if he does go for a rotation. And uh, he actually, I don't know if he hasn't seen Zhang Zaya, he could be in a little bit of trouble here. And he'll get hit for sure, and that will do a little bit of damage oh, yeah. here, but it, he still has a little bit more as far as Tangos goes. He does have the boots of speed, so Lance is going to have a hard time locking him down. Two points in time walk, uh, one in the other two passives, and yeah. In general, it's it's annoying, but it's I think he's still going to be fine. Uh, Elgin's yeah. one of those offlaners where he can just kind of sit back and uh, spam out those nukes, get a little bit of gold, and get plenty of experience. But for right now, we do see Solitech covering up the bottom rune. It is going to be invis for him, so he's going to use that to get 30 seconds of free lane experience. Yeah, the solo sort of bit as well with DDZ is going to have a fantastic time. He won't have that 9 minute orchid like we saw in the last game, but should have a relatively fast 4 star for if he's. I don't think. He might actually farm up the mech for himself as well. Actually, no, what? There's a Chen in the team. Never mind. Uh, yeah, early, early 4 star coming out here for uh, DDZ. And at the same time, I mean, we do have Naki, as you mentioned, with that level 2 sandstorm just farming up the jungle. And uh, I think it was the first time I saw this happen was one of the one of the, the European teams that were doing it. But it's become so attack. popular now that it just gives Sanking. It's, he's becoming such a more popular pick. I mean, he has been relatively popular, but now he's just sort of exploding onto the international scene. And, uh, yeah, and it's just going to accelerate. And we saw the power of the Sand King in the game on on, uh, on Saturday for Everlast. And uh, Naki played it fantastically. I think I, I called him MVP once or twice, the way he played it. And it was really fantastic. And, 
Gonna get enough stack here as well to continue with the sandstorm. Mm -hmm. So we do see Skyrath Mage farming up a little bit of the jungle with a double pull going on from him. It's making it very difficult for Hawaii to just hold possession in the lane. So he's actually made his way over here um, to try to leech maybe from the Sand King if he's farming up there. Otherwise, find a gank opportunity on Superfly here in the mid because, as you said, didn't pick up a very durable neutral creep. So he might find an opening here. I mean, if they can get a shackle, they can get a pounce. They can combo on him pretty well, but have to do it quickly as we do see now a smoke rotation from Sand King Skyrath. And here it comes. He does go for the pounce. Superfly pops off the Doom immediately on him while doing a lot of damage with the Scorched Earth. And yeah, he's going to send BSG packing. The question is whether or not they can get the kill. And I think they can. One more right click and he's gone. First Flood. And with a Burst Strike on DDZ, they're about to get a double. Oh, double wow. kill for Superfly. That's amazing. Amazing wow, wow, start for so them. Yeah, that is the start you want on the Doom. I mean, fantastic. That's going to accelerate his, uh, well... Probably gonna go for a mechanism in the yeah. Gonna get going on bottom. Gonna go hard on Solitech, but a TP coming in from the Sand King. Gonna get a burrow off in no time at all. They do lock him in with the Chen Creep though, and it's enough damage for Faceless Void to clean it up. So and despite the TP rotation, Lance gets a pick off as well, putting some points on the board for Arrow. Yeah, I mean it's enough to stop him as well, and uh, with, with Lance getting that, it's gonna accelerate to his uh, Battle Fury. I'm keeping an eye on this Morphling because Morphling running similarly, I mean, he has got, uh, looking at the CS, he's sitting ahead on the CS as well, and uh, that's pretty fantastic. Slark being zoned out of the lane gives him a little bit of a chance, but uh, BSG dying that first blood's a bit of a problem. Oh, he can be a little bit of trouble. Oh, just leaping away at the last end, last second there. Mm -hmm. Yep, Silver uh, T kind of creates some space for himself. I think he's going to go for that early Lincoln thrush. What do you think? Mm. Uh, 100%, yeah, going to get the Lincolns. I mean, especially up against the... Uh, the leap and the stun and everything coming out, the shackle as well. Maybe even the nuke from the chain. I mean, this is going to help him out. And uh, it's really safe, I mean, going for that. But the Morphling, I saw a thread on Reddit uh, where people were speaking about what sort of heroes do they feel are going to make their way back in. Um, sort of heroes that were recently popular. And Morphling was one of the ones a lot of people spoke about. And uh, although if he secured a lot of safe farm, he's able to get that... Um, and he's able to get that fast Lincolns into, into shotgun. He still is an extremely, extremely hard carry into the late game. Mm -hmm. So, for right now, kind of just both support, sets of supports roaming about a little bit, trying to flex some muscle without actually accomplishing too much. It was actually a pretty awkward movement from the Skywrath here, uh, trying to gank Slark on the top. I don't know if he's intentionally revealing spells just to give DDZ some confidence, but now we're going to see that action, and most likely the kill. Let's see Burst Strike connect. Yes! They will get the Burst Strike on top of him, and with a crit, they certainly will get this kill. Double damage! Coming out of the Doom, so much likely potential. He's going to go for Mosin. Look at that damage. Needs two more hits. Can he find them with the Scorched Earth movement speed? Gets juked around a little bit. Going under the tower, but in the end, thinks better of it and will go and retreat. Now, he's not popping his buckler, but it does still provide him some passive stats. And uh, going back into the jungle region where D uh, Mosin has returned. So, yeah, it's a difficult position for Arrow to be in with his Doom just being such a prominent figure. High HP, high damage, going for the mechanism very early and with some great smoke rotations from uh, the Everlast supports. I just, I'm going to go have a um, look quick. Uh, this draft that they're running here, it's almost exactly what they ran in the... Um, in the game against Zephyr, I just want to see if I can jump back to the Everlast versus Zephyr. I think it was game two they ran that. Mm -hmm. Let me just have a quick look. Uh, Three of the heroes are the same, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they had the Elder Titan Doom Sand King and that AA Marana as they pick up. So, yeah, I mean, are we going to see the Doom going for that quick blink dagger once again, the mech blink? Um, you know, and he gets that slump from the creep. We're going to see some massive. Um, some massive team fight plays once again, and I mean they're really heading straight for it. I mean sitting three one, they're slightly ahead in gold, about a thousand in gold, thousand in experience as well. So they are sitting in a really great position here to keep. If they keep this momentum and they hold it off like this, um, they should be able to. Um, we should see similar flavors to what happened in that game two versus Zephyr. But on the other hand, this is Arrow Gaming, and uh, they they I think they know exactly how to deal with this. And the Faceless Void I think is going to play a massive part in moving to that. He does kind of disrupt the whole sort of massive team fight if he manages to jump to the back and get a good Chrono off on um, maybe the Sand King or maybe the um, maybe the Skyrath Mage or even the ET and pick him off. I think Doom might become a bit of a problem in the, in the mid to late game. he will be quite tanky. He won't be able to pick him off in a Chrono Sphere. But on the other end, I mean. There are a couple of heroes seem to pick off, Sand King, Elder Titan, and um, the Skyrath Mage. And uh, Lance, on the other hand, has got his Treads. Treads Perseverance, after getting that kill in the bottom lane, 62 CS opposed to the 66 on BSR. BSR, on the other hand, is getting really close to that um, Lincoln Sphere, rushing for it immediately. And uh, it's uh, it's slightly... It's, well, it's a little bit more expensive, I think, than the... Um, 
Uh, mid lane, we're gonna see some action here for sure. We're gonna see the concoction come out first. Low armor Doom taking a pretty big hit, but that mechanism, he still has plenty, and they're gonna turn it around with the Sand King Burrow Strike onto two neutrals. And Xiang Zai, the Tesla Faith comes out, but it's not gonna be fast enough. The Skyrath Mage nukes sets it up, and with Mosin getting doomed, this looks to be another double in favor of them. Mosin dropping very, very low. Best he can do is deny himself to neutral creeps, and I just don't know if it's gonna happen. Dot taking over time, but Superfly has to let him go, and he might actually survive just barely by the skin of his teeth. In fact, 50 HP is plenty with that headdress to just barely keep him above the lower threshold there. So, yeah, he walks away. The Doom is technically wasted, but overall, just one more kill under Everlast Belt. Yeah, it's it's slowing down a lot as well. I mean, that those are the kind of kills that they need to pick off. If you look at their lineup, they do need to get these quick pickoffs, especially on the hero like the um, the Doom, who has had a relatively great start. I mean, first blood and on a killing spree at the moment. Although DDZ is gonna go for a hand of Midas by the looks of things. So Faith boots hand of Midas. Oh, missing the leap. Yeah, that was a very awkward pounce. He actually got like path block right before he went on it, and so he just kind of bounced off the creep and went into dead air, not really accomplishing too much. And if you look at his farm, there's not much to really expect from him. He's level six with just barely a bracer. He's gonna go for a drum eventually, but his farm is very insubstantial at only 1300. Chen's doing way better than him. Chen's about to pick up a mech and in 650 and BSG is still very far away from anything. Luckily getting a little bit of face time with the creep wave since the supports are roaming elsewhere, but meanwhile, the carry is farming extremely well. We do see that the Faceless Void is moving towards Battle Fury, actually has the Claymore, only needs a broadsword, and the Morphling almost has his Lincolns. Is only 500 gold off of that. Dyer's and bottom tower this is just, uh, it's gonna be come down to the carries. Like you said, Faceless Void very prominent as far as how he uses his abilities, and BSR, how he uses his farm. But for right now, a smoke movement on top. Gonna try to pin down Slark before he can get his ulti off. They get the Ancient Seal. He can't pounce. He can't uh, use his Shadow Dance. And he will be finished off Radiance by the Sand King's uh, Sandstorm, in fact. But the, the only problem here with the face with the face is Void getting a little bit of farm. We're getting quite a lot of farm here and uh, getting his quick battle fury. He is, he's no anti mage. Uh, oh, oh actually, he's gonna go kill maybe on the top lane. He's quite tanky though. TP, TP support coming in out, so he should be able to get away just fine. Yeah, the, the biggest problem here, are they gonna carry on chasing? Yeah. Like he has a move speed advantage after that concussion, but he's going to put the Doom on Mosin just so he can't Hand of God and possibly Mechanism if he had the item. But again, just kind of throwing out the ulti unnecessarily because he's not going to be able to follow through with it. They made good rotations where the Kurno didn't become the death of Solitic, but all in all, I think both sides just committed resources they knew would not Doom very much at all. But yeah. Oh well. yeah. um, what I'll say about, about the Faces Void is... He's not, he's no, um, he's no anti-mage, so he doesn't have the ability to flash farm the jungle or split push, so once he gets that Battle Fury, it's pretty much go time for him. He needs to start joining a couple of team fights. he needs to start, I mean, he can if he wants to, um, you know, farm the jungle, but he doesn't have that Radiant's ability to farm as fast as a hero like the anti-mage. Um, just speaking of heroes that rush the Battle Fury as quick as uh, the Faces Void does, so him joining team fights could be a bit of a problem. Uh, he could maybe jump in and lock himself in, get into a Chronosphere and uh, maybe take a Doom or maybe take... Uh, an ancient seal or something in the team fight, so it, it's it's difficult for him to, um, and he doesn't have a lot of HP. About thousand HP when he switches to trades, nine hundred eighty-six HP should have about a thousand soon. So I don't know. It, it's it, he could be the saving grace with some very very clutch plays, and I, I kind of expect that from the player like uh, like Lance, but. It's going to be really difficult for him to get involved in team fights, uh, especially with such low HP. You'll need to get maybe one more item, perhaps a. Um, this could be a, a BKB void. I think it's definitely yeah. going to go. Oh, it definitely has to be. There's no way yeah. that he can go through this entire game without a BKB. There's just too much magical nuke that he has to deal with. We do see the Shackle Shot trying to set up Xiang Zai's uh, concoction, but instead he's just going to hit himself in the face. And without that ulti, going to bring himself quite low. But I actually kind of have to disagree with you about the. the benefit of the battle fear. I really don't think joining fights is on the table for Void. Maybe a couple of uh, key openings with the Chronosphere cooldown as it uh, allows, but really right now I think once he gets battle fear he needs to be looking at double stacked ancients and triple yeah. stacked neutral camps and just kind of focus on that. Yeah. Sure he doesn't have flash farm compared to like an anti-mage who can jump all over the map in a second, mm -hmm. but he still has a good uh, mobility uh, cooldown. The time walk is now only 90 mana. He has the Perseverance regen, so he can pretty much spam that out, and he should be able to cleave down uh, not only mm -hmm. the lane creeps, but also plenty of neutral camps as well. So I really think yeah. he's got to be focusing on that next item after the Battle Fury, as he has now completed that first yeah. core.
I, 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 sorry, I, was, I wasn't being specific enough. I was, ma I was mainly referring to the pace of this game. That whatever last, which, yeah, whatever last they're playing with at the moment, mm -hmm. you know, making things happen over the map with their team attack. fights. I felt, uh, sorry, I, I meant to say, I, I feel like he might be forced into a lot of team okay. fights with that battle fury and maybe unable to farm quick enough in, in the interim between, you know, the rotations of the last to maybe pick up an item or two like an anti mage would. But yeah, I definitely agree. Like he can still farm pretty quickly uh, with stacking up camps, but it looks like they actually are grouping up for the top now and uh, Faces Void has actually joined them so he is kind of responding to the pace of the game and uh, that's so that's mainly what I meant by sure. him but uh, yeah I, I, I do obviously I do agree with you saying that he can farm very quickly especially with stacked up camp stacked up ancients but uh, I don't think Everlast are going to allow it this game I think they're going to continue to um, keep on the pressure they're going to continue especially with that mech up that's such an early mech and uh, Lincoln Sphere now up on the Morphling as well, who's just farming up a storm. I mean, 112 CS at the 15 minute mark, and uh, he's got the boot up now, we'll have his trade soon. And uh, he's just gonna explode. And there's that Blink Dagger now mm -hmm. for um, for Superfly as well, who's gonna pick up a creep, pick up yeah. the stun creep pretty soon. And Nock is not even like 75 gold away from his Blink Dagger too. Once he gets his Blink in conjunction with Superfly, we've seen how great these guys can communicate and coordinate, and we just, I, I can't wait to see what they can accomplish, Radiant just jumping on Arrow and uh, really taking the fight to them. And yeah, completely agree with you that it's it's not really what the Faces Void wants, it's what he has to do Radiant's because yeah. in this position, Everlast are going to be forcing the issue. Already taking the tier one with this Morphling who can split push to its heart's, his heart's content. And then really when Everlast start bringing the fight to their opponents, they can do so much work because the, the Doom Radiant's coming out on the Faces Void really attack. limits his potential and the nukes coming out on everybody else just evaporates them unless the Chen is perfectly on point with his heals. He's brought, he's brought up a ghost effort now, so just skipping treads completely going to rush straight into a fast ethereal blade and uh, that's really going to shut them down. I mean, heroes like Slark, Slark is going to explode. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of farm. He's, as you mentioned, he's going towards those drums. He's just picked up the, um, just picked up a, uh, a, uh, a battle of strength as well to try to get the, the treads up as Treads up as fast as possible, but he has little to no effect on this game at the moment. Uh, sitting back in the jungle, only up to level seven, and uh, actually bottom lane, Shanghai yeah. gonna go pick, get picked off here as well. Yeah, a uh, chemical rage will nullify the dooms dot for the most part, but oh wow, hand of god coming out, the shackle to kind of force him back. This is actually gonna be a failed smoke gank for uh, Everlast. I mean, I think that's the first time that they've smoked and not made a kill happen. So. Uh, a little bit unfortunate, but they still have all their resources. They still have the, the Epi Blink. Naki has had his Arcane Boots for a long time, so he has plenty of mana to throw out a, a stun here and there and still make the difference when it when oh, push comes to shove. Face is Void trying, trying to do a little bit of something, something here top to BSR. BSR is not having any of it. He spawns up a Face is Void um, replica immediately Radiant's and. Uh, tower is under attack. He's rather just going to play it safe and keep that sit back and nice big creep wave pushing up for him as well so he should be able to farm this up no problem and he's just yeah he's going to be a massive problem for arrow gaming uh in the mid game I'm, I'm i'm i think we might go into a third game i mean this is going really well for arrow and uh unless we see some insane plays from ddz who's in fact going for a necro book so I guess in this case we might see him um, trying to create a little bit more space for uh, for Arrow with maybe a little bit of split push here and there, uh, working well obviously against the Mana Drain that's of course disrupting, maybe trying to disrupt the uh, trying to disrupt the Sand King with his Blink Dagger sending the creeps over to him and using it when he goes into that Sandstorm at the true site. So um, DDZ maybe going for a clutch here, a little bit of a clutch item and he could have gone for the four staff to have a little bit more mobility, even for the Blink Dagger as well, being able to get into position for a shackle on the um, Doom if he does blink in on the Elder Titan to maybe disrupt his stomp and, and uh, Earth Splitter, which we have, actually haven't seen yet. He hasn't taken a level of Earth Splitter going for the, uh, what was his skill build? I don't know, yeah, one four three build. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I mean, you do want like one point in Echo Stomp just to try to get it off occasionally. Otherwise, literally all you do is spirit and walk around and hit things. But yeah, yeah it is uh, going to be. Well, let's see how effective it is. We're going to see the initiation here on Lance, completely destroying him. They do get the epicenter off as well, though. He's not actually moving towards the radiant heroes. Not sure about that. Kind of left super fly high and dry. But he can maybe turn around with the mech. No, dies too quickly to test the faith. Won't be able to mech. Now we see the nukes come out on Mosen. Boom oh. goes the hammer or the briefcase or the staple gun or whatever the hell you want to call it he punches hard <laughs> and we're going to see morphling of the long side sand king clean things up so they did kind of leave the doom high and dry and squishy as Skyrath mages he's going to fall as well but they did take three and especially taking that doom or sorry the faces void is a really big kill yeah faces void and slark at the same time um just back to what we were talking about the old titan the skill build hasn't picked up the earth splitter 
Um, I feel like if you look at the way the, get, the pace of what the game was going with Doom getting at really early um, mechanisms and Nokia as well picking up that uh, very fast blink dagger, I felt if he had gone for the Earth Splitter that they would have won that team fight hands down. I mean, they were grouped up really hard amongst the, the trees there uh, in, uh, what was it, it was uh, this area over here, they were sort of grouped up. If he had an Earth Splitter there, that fight yeah. would have gone much better for uh, Everlast. So, I must say I disagree with his skill ball, but... Uh, Going, yeah, maybe could have helped Radiant's him out a bit more, and maybe he was expecting to get attack. a quick level. But at the same time, <laughs> Morphling is a thousand gold of his, um, Ooh, of his, of his, uh, his shotgun, Ethel Blade, and Nucky gonna get a kill behind the tower. Diving really deep, actually. Yeah, diving extremely deep, and now they're gonna try to punish him with the pounce. They drop the Central War 2 while Lance just goes to town onto Superfly, but has to dodge out that uh, ultimate, the Mystic Flare, and so he will have to let Superfly go. But of course they pin down Naki. He was just locked in place with all these pounces and two troll nets. There's really no way to escape. Uh, you, you have to be a real Houdini to pull your way out of that one. But they traded essentially the Wind Ranger, delaying her farm a little bit. But as we were talking about, she went for a pretty interesting build here, which is allowing her to ramp up her potential very, very quickly. Going for the Midas into Necro 3 is going to be the intention here. Necro 1. Oh, going to get the Doom on Lance. It's pretty big. Stacking up the Silence is hard just to bring him down. And without a, without a Faceless Void, you really don't have a team fight. Like, you might be able to throw out a Concoction and a couple of nukes here and there, but you really don't have that backbone of damage since Flark is so underfarmed. So, good initiation from Everlast, and they they went out for sure. They're right now up 10 to 4, uh, and they are preventing uh, Void from using that battle theory Radiant's to its full effect, as you were saying. Yep, and at the same time, I mean, Morphling has picked up his shotgun and uh, takes the tower in the bottom lane as well. So, he spoke about the split push maybe coming out from the Morphling. He's just not even needed in fights. They have such great team fight potential, and a lot of burst damage coming out from the um, Sand King as well as the Doom and the. And the Scarf Mage too with that Mystic Flare that he's just not even needed yet. I mean, he can come in in the end as sort of a clutch and maybe do a little bit of a clean up, clean up in, the, in the middle aisle if he needs to. But uh, it's just, yeah, I mean, they have everything sort of set down right now. If you look at the Gold Graph, they are ahead by about 5,000, 5,000 experience as well. And uh, they're not stopping here. I mean, they're just going to brute force this tier 1 tower down in the mid. And I don't think Arrow attack. have the heroes to deal with it at the moment unless uh, Lance comes back in. His farm has deteriorated a lot, as we mentioned. He is going for that BKB. Morphling is Radiant's about 50 TS ahead of him already, attack. and, uh, oh, maybe a little bit of action. Possibly. The Slark does a little bit of shenanigans with the Pounce, but it looks like there's not... Okay, there's going to be the Chronosphere, and man, Skyroth drops quickly. Uh, he has such attack. low armor right now, only one armor. So the Slave Concoction does a, a world of hurt. But up here, up top, we're going to see Naki rotate in to defend the tower, and he does have the backup of the Morphling. So if DDZ overstays his welcome, they're certainly going to punish him for it. But right now, it looks like it's just farm mode as they clear out the waves, though seeding the tier 1 tower as a consequence. Nice stomp coming out, but I don't think they can follow through with it too much. They will pop the Doom off, they will try to go on BSG here, and Slarka drops quickly, but they mech him up. Mosin caught in by the Earth Splitter, big damage coming in from the Elder Titan. Superfly running away with that Scorched Earth, and he will survive! Sand King blinking in, stunning out, Epicenter up, and they stomp him too! But he's still able to time walk away in the end. A couple of really clutch backtracks coming through. Morphling trying to finish the job, will go in for that wave, for that nuke, and he will pick him up very nicely down now Hawaii stayed way too long got healed up by his allies but he's still in the fight and has to head back home so what looked like it was an easy tier one instead they commit to it and we see really the potential of Everlast lineup now that that morphling just, just crushed it was what was it it was uh yeah it was the Void. I mean, that was insane. I mean, he is so far ahead right now. 2,400 gold as well. He can pick up his. Um, what's he going to go for? Probably going to pick up a Yasha now. Try to maybe move into a Manta style. Yeah, Manta style going to be probably the flavor for Void, right? I mean, for Morphling right now. And that just lets him push even more. Um, I guess D DDZ at the moment is trying to do a little bit of split push of his own. As I mentioned, he picked up that Necro Book too. And. Uh, I don't know, with the kind of the, the pace at which um, Everlast can take team fights with all their AoE and all their massive spell damage, I mean, I guess they're lacking the Ancient Apparition here for the um, added, um, well, Ancient Seal does give you a little bit extra magic damage, but obviously the AoE magic damage coming out from the Ice Vortex was a bit better for them yeah. in that um, game against Zephyr, but right now they're doing everything so perfectly, and uh, the Doom's just been on par, I mean, we spoke about Doom priority, in that case there, the Void wasn't near, the um, chain is so weak that they just bring it down so quickly, so his priority Real right quick, now... Real um, quick, I'm getting some weird lag spikes, so I'm going to disconnect out. I just want to remind the viewers okay. in Dota TV, when I reconnect back in, you might have to re-enable the audio channel, toggle it off, yeah. then toggle it back I'll on in order to hear me, but uh, I have to go and 
Well, unless there is a kill, because I don't want to miss that. We do actually, Morphling does get his little shotgun off and will do that. But as soon as action stops, I'm going to disconnect because I'm getting this, some really weird lag spikes in it. It may, means we're missing particles and other things that, like, I'm not even seeing, like, waveforms and stuff happen, which is awkward. But, uh, yeah, it looks like we're fine, so I'm going to disconnect real quick and uh, come back into it. Cool. Well, yeah, I will keep us occupied so long as uh, BSU picks up a solo kill for himself in the river on the ancient. Oh, sorry, on the um, Skyrath Mage, who is uh, relatively easy pick off at the moment for Arrow Gaming, and it looks like they are trying to utilize that and pick him off. But now, Morphling and as well as Slotic trying to go hard onto Roshan, bring him down. Morphling doing so much damage, 230, um, 230 hit now with his morph, with his agility morph all the way up. And uh, Saint Don Blaze is back. Don't forget to quickly just toggle the audio channels. Um, if you're unable to hear myself or Blaze, um, for those of you on Dota TV, uh, let me just tap it. Okay, no, I mean, I, I think they got it. I said it beforehand too, so they sh hopefully should be able to do that no problem. But yeah, things are looking good now. Roche will be picked up by Everlast, and that's an Aegis on a Morphling who is already, as you were saying, going extremely aggressive in his playstyle. Look at the agility to strength ratios. Uh, 110 base to 13 base agility strength and with the Aegis of course he can sustain it but it's just really you, some the the old rhetoric goes you never go full agility but he's just about there and fearless in that regard because he has the Lincolns can nullify everything but chronosphere essentially at least once and then uh, can do, dish out so much damage yeah we're just putting out there in case because I see a lot of the classes are disconnecting and reconnecting the whole time so in case some of the other players if they understand English they'll be able to see but yeah like I said the pace is still going and now BSG is going to get brought down here really quickly. Yeah. Looks like I'm still missing some particles though, it's weird. Like the bur the burrow strikes aren't happening, the waveforms aren't happening, but I guess we'll just have to live and well, uh, in... This always happens to me, so in the gaps. It's, 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 I'm lucky it's not me this time. Oh, no stop, can land in the middle lane. I thought Lance might be in a bit of trouble. It might be a server thing, who knows, but I guess we'll just have to fill in the blanks a little bit. Uh, it's everything, I mean, the motion is still fine, everything's smooth, but we see the epicenter coming out, big damage is going to come in on Mosin. He's going to drop down quite readily, and now they can try to pursue on top of Lance. If uh, He's looking for a choke point chronosphere, he's going to find it here, bursting hard on TNT. Easy, but we do see the doom is on cooldown. Can he get the stop, though? The bear strike, they didn't even need the stop with Bung Cell Roti follow through. Oh my gosh, that damage. The Elder Titan, Natural Order, the wave, the Morphling with that uh, Ethereal Blade. They're just like treating this face's Void like a Dire Tide Roche. They're just stacking up all these amplifiers on him, and mm -hmm. he just melts. Yeah, and the top lane as well, we might see Shang uh, Tsai. He's in a little bit of trouble here. Got a 4 star, he'll be fine. Oh, Morphling! <laughs> Yeah, Sean's a burst damage. Shang Tsai doesn't stand a chance. The four staff only gets him so far, and uh, right now he's just not had much going for him. You look at his net worth. This is a 4,800 net worth alchemist, and although the Skywrath is a little bit worse for wear, he's not facing this, the shotgun Morphling that can just do so much in so little time. So. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the bane of their existence right now, and they don't really have an answer for it. Like I was talking about in the draft, what do you really pick up? They picked up... Okay, no, just down the neutrals. But um, their last pick to try to deal with it was the Faces Void, but that was their carry for Lance. I, I thought maybe Lance was going to go Alchemist, and then they were going to pick up a support that had some silencing mechanics to deal with Morph, but in the end, they just picked up the Void, and although Chronosphere is very powerful, they've yet to use it on the Morphling himself, and as a result, yeah, BSR has just kind of been able to go to work. Now on bottom lane, Naki will stun out onto BSG. He has uh, plenty of cooldowns, though, and he's just going to go for his... Oh, that is that is mean. He's going to go for the TP during Shadow Stance, but a quick Centaur stomp. They didn't. I don't even think they see the animation for the TP. They're just like, he's still here. He's going to get stunned. And the result is a very clean kill. Yeah. Um, the way to deal with this, I think, Arrow Gaming, I mean, I wasn't here in the draft, so I don't really remember the bans, but as annoying as it is, the only thing that really goes against this sort of brute force five-man push lineup is the um, is going for a little bit of split push. I mean, if they're grouping up and they're pushing hard, pick up a hero like an anti-mage. I mean, if anti-mage had the same farm as Lance did in this game, we would have seen a lot of more towers go down, as I mentioned, his ability to flash farm. Anti-mage, on the other hand, can create a lot of space for the rest of his team by split pushing being an annoyance, but... At the moment, I mean, the way this game started off, I think he would have had a similar problem to that of Lance, and that's been picked off all the time by the, um, by the Doom, getting the Doom off, and uh, yeah, I mean, Nature's Prophet was another big one, just trying to split push and trying to create a little bit of space for your team, a little bit of breathing room, but at the moment, yeah, unless you're going to have, an, if, if you have a stronger, a, a stronger uh, team fight, 
you're not gonna it's not gonna go great for you if you have a lineup sort of like I guess it's lineup's not too bad, but a lineup like this you're gonna struggle against big team fights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. This is it's just difficult in general. I mean, we're seeing the face of Void. He's moving towards that uh, Black King bar. He's actually only about a hundred gold off, so he will be able to come become relevant now. But the question is whether it's too late. I mean, they're already down so many kills right here. Now we see the burst strike coming on DDZ. Oh, that damage! Mystic Flare is all you needed, but throw in a, a stomp and an epicenter just for good measure. They're yeah. just creaming him, and he's actually a prime player right now. By the fact that we went to Midas, he invested a lot into his mid to late game status. In 30 minutes, I'd say that qualifies. So we're expecting big things from Wind Ranger, and just picking him off individually Radiance with a couple of cooldowns that will be attack. back shortly, it actually does not bode well for the next minute or so for Arrow Gaming. So mm. they do get the BKB. Uh, Void will be finally relevant as he's intended to be, but I'd say Morphling's been there for the past eight or so minutes, and that has really just put them behind schedule. Um, uh, Pug does look great here to go up against this big uh, sort of team fight that they have. I mean, uh, THD, your THDs, your Pugners, your, and then maybe a hero that can split push and create a little bit of space. Um, but uh, yeah, was, were those heroes banned out? Was the Pugna banned out? Uh, Pugna wasn't, but I just, I don't know. It just, it feels like they weren't able to put pressure on a Morphling. So if they drafted something that could go maybe for an aggressive tri lane, use the, like I said, use Lance as the Alchemist instead, put Mosin in the aggressive jungle and tried to just get a little bit lucky on the creeps. I don't know. There are, there are definitely ways to make it happen, and I feel like their weakest point, Everlast's weakest point, were when they were jungling the Sand King with only a Skyrath to support, but it's obviously not something that a Slur can exploit. He's he's the one yeah. who's just kind of sitting there getting zoned, and I don't know. It's just it's a difficult draft to go against, and i got to give props to Everlast for pulling it out, where they picked up both the Elder Titan and the Morphling, means the hardest counter to Morphling, the Elder Titan's natural order, um, mm -hmm. isn't on the field, so he gets to sit here high and dry with this 25 armor value and say, come at me guys, this is great. But yeah. now he does lose the Aegis, like I said, BKB is up for Faces Void, full 10 seconds, so I would say this is their best chance to try to turn this game around. If a comeback is truly possible, it is now at this moment that they must strike. Yeah, the only problem is the Doom going through the BKB, if they Radiant's do catch out Lance at the back end, and they do have the Blink Dagger now on the Doom, Radiant's as well as the as well as the Sanking Sadder for a while, they do catch him out. But uh, yeah, I mean, BSR is massive at the moment, he's going to have a Butterfly pretty soon as well, it's about 1,600 gold off a of Butterfly, so... And with the, with the TP boots and his Relocate, he's able to be anywhere and everywhere on the map, whenever he wants to. So, Split Down Push Mania. Tower is under attack. Mm -hmm. As well, we're going to see some neat item progression that we really don't usually see. Like, uh, I was talking about the Wind Ranger quite a bit, and she's going to be moving in towards most likely a Scythe of Vice, as we see this smoke movement towards their own jungle. But, um, yeah, also pickups like the... Uh, eventually, Mask of Menace on the Face of the Void will come into fruition. B Sark will go for the BKB. But looking at the side that actually has all the farm, it's actually some pretty interesting decisions. The Shivas to follow through with that Blink Initiation on my pro. Uh, we've got the Yule Scepter on Naki, which has multiple uses. It could just be something where uh, Sand King's worried he's going to uh, kill off the Necro 3, doesn't want to take that pure damage so he can make himself invulnerable with the Tornado while the Epicenter still goes on. Or he can just go ahead and when he sees Lance go for that big Chronosphere, if the BKB is not active, which it should be by this point, but if it isn't, he does have an answer. He could just throw him up into a Tornado and essentially waste that whole ultimate. But um, yeah. the last utility I would just have to say is if you're seeing, if you're locked in place, maybe BSG pounces you, maybe concoctions flying your direction, uh, anything like that, then you can immediately use the Yules on yourself and uh, make that work for yourself as well. Uh, yep, quick kill on the bottom lane against Shanghai and oh. uh, just BSR. Yeah, Hawaii in a bad spot here. He does have Mosin's Creep to help him out. He's going to get Test of Faith home. That's the big thing here. Um, they're going to try to f finish up somebody, but they get the Burst Strike. They get the Burst Strike on Mosin. And uh, also, the, all these Chen Creeps are still sticking around, so it's not just going to be one kill. It might be uh, him losing his entire army here as they can kind of farm it up in an AoE. And indeed they do. Here we go. But, um... Yeah, this is just really good. Oh, B BSR down bottom. This is actually pretty huge. If they can finish him off, this is a huge kill. If they can force him to buy back, even better. But for right now, 900 gold uh, taken out of his pocket. Slurk bounces back and is going to finish his BKB in only 1,000 gold. BSR was just doing oh. his splish push thing. He's like, I got a Lincoln's. I got a lot of strength to morph, and I've got these BOTs. But uh, he wasn't. He didn't have enough mana. He couldn't jump to a replicate. He couldn't BOT away. He was just pinned down, and they were able to use the Chronosphere actually take him down for the first time this game. Mm -hmm. He did have a buy his butterfly right before he died, so I mean, there was a, no love lost really for him. He picks up the butterfly and it does give 
It does give Arrow a little bit of room now to breathe. It does anti mage? I think did he get the kill there? Got the kill? Uh, was no, it, it was Slark. Uh, it was BSG. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, Slark can maybe not get an item. He's got his BKB completed as well. So, you know, it's it's so difficult to say that this game is in the bag for for Everlast. I mean, they're sitting ahead twenty one to eight. They are ahead by fifteen, fifteen and a half thousand gold, fifteen and a half thousand experience, but. We've seen comebacks. We have seen comebacks, and uh, if there's any team that can pull it off, I think it is. Uh, I think it is. Uh, it's Arrow, and we'll have to wait and see if they can do it this game. And uh, it's with Morphling's to be a bit of a problem, but like we see now that he, he's not invisible. Invincible, sorry, not invisible. <laughs> not invincible. He can get brought down, and that was without a. I think it was without a Chrono. Did they use the Chrono in the beginning? They did use the Chrono to start it off. So yeah. they got a lot of bashes in that route, and uh, BSG was actually sent home, so he was able to kind of go on the aggression as soon as he was back in his own base. So they, they yeah. did kind of run him down using the Chronosphere, but if that's what it takes, that's what they'll go for. The only problem now is that, as you mentioned, he was able to right-click that butterfly before his death, and now Lance is one item behind once again. That Monkey King bar is so necessary to be able to actually bring this morph down. I can't imagine them doing it w without it, unless uh, the Bunk Cell Roti just goes completely balls to the walls. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I mean, like I said, they're not out of it yet, and it's it's weird to say that because, you know, I feel like they're they lost a way ahead at the moment. But, you know, with the faces void, it takes one or two good team fights, and I mean, it's it, when you get when you get a big team fight um, team like this, it's it's sometimes there might be a little bit of miscommunication. They might commit too much to maybe one. So maybe one hero, one little pickoff, and then sort of just get jumped on where they have all their spells of cooldown. I wouldn't say that their team fight relies too much on each other because they can get multiple little instances of damage off on of different parts of the, of the of a long prolonged team fight. So I don't know. It's 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 difficult to say. Oh, what's going on here? Uh, just like getting a little, a little bit of trouble. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's 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 if it's coordinated perfectly, I think this is going to be. A relatively slow finish for. Oh, oh they nine. stopped him! Oh. I can't believe it! I was watching that. And I, he was like 0.1 seconds. He's home free. He's in the Shadow Dance. No problem. Oh, wait. We forgot how good Superfly is at the Radiant Blink Centaur. <laughs> like, he just attack. assumes the, the avatar Dark of the Centaur when it comes down to attack. it. He blinks in. He locks down Radiant the Slark, and this guarantees the Rax. That's incredible. Yeah. So if BSG hadn't get picked off, there, wasn't picked off there, I think they might be able to defend this and uh, yeah, maybe try and come back. But now I think this is just yeah, this is slowly but surely the end. Yeah, absolutely. That's just, I mean, they really can't do anything. If Lance is going to go in. He's going to do a lot of damage to Morphling here. They even uh, Yule's on the tanking. I don't know about that. But Morphling just strength morphs there the entire time. Sheeped up. Stopped in time, doesn't matter to him. He's just going to get extra HP through his spells. And although Mosin tries to keep his allies up, there's just, it's not happening. They all drop, they all fall down. And uh, now it just looks ugly from here. In fact, even stunning Alchemist, he stuns himself. A great play from Naki on the Sand King. And that is going to be the GG to take us to game three. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but again, the power of the team fight coming out from uh, Everlast and. Uh, well, I think we should. I think we should probably say our goodbyes as quick as possible, so I don't miss the lobby again. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. We can keep the <laughs> outro a little bit brief, but props to Everlast with their amazing play, and glad to see Morphling back. A very fun hero to watch and keep an eye on as he plays so aggressively and, and just accomplishes so very much. A face of void almost got enough harm to keep up with him, but you just compare those numbers: 773 GPM to 440. That Morphling easily trumped Lance this time yep. around. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was the AOC Pro Cup, uh, best of three in the upper bracket round two. And that brings us to game three. As I said, one to one is the score. And depending on who your rare's on, this next one's going to be quite a nail biter. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I am Blaze of Dota Talk. You can check me out at twitter.com slash blazecasting. He is Congo Kyle over at twitter.com slash Congo Kyle, as well as Facebook.com slash Congo ZA. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. A quick shout out to AOC, who sponsored this tournament, and that's going to be it for us for this game two. Game three will be coming up in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs>